Hey everyone, Tanstack Router lets you define your routes in two ways. File-based like Next.js or code-based like React Router. I already made five dedicated videos to the file-based approach, so today we're gonna implement features like authentication, parameters, nesting, and many more. Let's begin with an empty React project. We just have a hello world that is displayed here, and now we can already, with npm install, add Tanstack React Router to our dependencies. With that, we now can define our routes in a file, but we can really pick whatever file we want because this is the code base approach. So the first thing we need to create is our root that is created with create root route, obviously importing from Tanstack React Router. Here, the only requirement is to pass a component that for now will be pretty much a simple hello. Now, the thing is, we do not want to define components here inside our routes.tsx, so we can, for example, create a folder called components, and we can add here our root.tsx, and from here we can export our root that will be, for now, a simple function returning again our hello world. So, to make our first example, we can replace this immediately, and we can directly import our root. Now let's say we also want to create two pages, so I can create again a folder called pages and the first one will be our home.tsx and the second one can be a dashboard.tsx. Here we can simply define a couple of functions that will be dashboard which returns this is the dashboard and pretty much the same with our function called home which can return something like this is the home page. Now we can go back to our roots definition and here we can link those two components in our route tree. So we need to define, for example, that our index will be create route. We can set the path that is obviously only the slash. Component is our home page. And there's still something missing apart from importing create route that is get parent route. And this is mandatory, so every time you define a new route, you always have to define which is the parent route, and we'll see that in a moment, but it has to do with TypeScript. We can do the same, obviously, for the dashboard, and we can now export our route tree, which is basically our root, which has some children's, and well, that's exactly the simple definition. But now, if we go on the browser, you see that nothing really changes, because we obviously have to change something inside app.ts6 to replace this hello world with our router. And the code is pretty straightforward. First of all, we need to create a router, obviously importing from the route tree that we defined in the other file. We have to expand an interface and this is required for TypeScript to properly work and give us all the type safety. And last, we can replace here this hello world with our route provider. And passing the route tree here is pretty much everything you need to make it work. If you go here, we we'll still see hello world, but now it is not coming from our app.ts6 but it is coming from our root. And if I change here, you see that hello is displayed on the page. And now if we want to achieve navigation, this is exactly the same as we did in the video with file-based routing. So you have to define a link element coming obviously from React Router. And here you can see that it is already type safe. I can only go on the root and on dashboard. And the content of your application will be rendered inside this outlet component. And now if I go on the browser, you can see that this is the home page and this is the dashboard. A reminder, if you're wondering how I can make bold the current route, well, it is this active props here. I just added font bold in the class name, which gets activated only if the route is active. Next up, let's say I want to create a path which takes some path parameter. So for example, in this case, it will be Pokemon detail route, which as usual takes get parent route and this time, the path will be something started with a dollar and it will be Pokemon ID. And the component will be Pokemon Detail, which will be implemented in a second. We can now go, as usual, on Pages, create our Pokemon Detail page. And again, it doesn't really matter where your functions are defined for the pages because the definition is only here in the route file. So here we have our function Pokemon Detail. And for now, I only want to show here the Pokemon ID. How can I do that? Well, the thing is that if you watch it, the file-based approach, you know that this object here has in fact something you can call use params, and with that hook, you can get all the params. For example, here, if I type data, you will see that data is in fact an object with Pokemon ID inside. 
So you can either export this constant here, so that from the Pokemon detail page, I can say the Pokemon ID is exactly these use params. And if I print it here and I go on the browser, I type for example 10 and the root is not found. And the reason is quite simple, I just forgot to add it here. So Pokemon data route, I can change again and you see the number 10 is displayed here. And this is working, but in some cases you might not want to export directly the route here. So if this is not exported, you can use the get route API and here you can pass a string Obviously it is type safe and I can say that this takes the route APIs from slash Pokemon and I can easily replace this one here. So without the import, this still works. Now let's say I want to get some information about the Pokemon. So first of all, I can create an API.ts file. I can paste something here. It's just fetch to Poke API. And I can use this get Pokemon function directly here in our route. I just need to use the loader function, which has in the parameters an object, which I can use to call get Pokemon with params dot, and you see it already autocompletes with Pokemon ID. So if I can import this here, I can go on Pokemon details, change this a little bit, add some more code here, and the only difference is really, I can now get the loader data from, again, root API, and I can display here some of the data that I read. Again, use loader data is type safe, so it already know that Pokemon is of the type Pokemon detail, which is exactly the return of this function. So now if I go back on our page, there it is. Caterpie is indeed the number 10. And if I go with the number nine, you will find Blastoise. The last bit here I want to tell you is that if you want to write a link pointing directly to one of those pages, you need to set Pokemon ID in the destination and pass the parameters in the Paramus object. With that, you can directly go on Charizard or Dragonite or whatever Pokemon you want to see. Next up, we have query parameters. And for that, I'm gonna quickly install Valibot to validate our query params, but this is not actually required. It's just to have an easier parsing function. So let's begin with our type that will be under type item filters. And this is our volleyball definition. I'm not going too much into detail about this as already did in the other video, but the only thing you really want to know specifically for the code base approach is that you have to define your route here. As usual with get parent route, you can specify the path, you can add the component, which we're gonna implement in a moment, and you can use the validate search function to make sure that your search is in fact validated with your model. If I finish to import the stuff here, this is now okay. And I can create the search page here. Don't forget to also add the search route here and import the search component we just created. You can have a look at the code quickly. Again, this is some logic, but it's just React code. You don't really need it for now. And obviously you can find the code on GitHub and again, explained in the file base video. But here, the only thing you need to know is that, again, we use this get route API to get a route API. And from here, with the use search hook, we can get our search parameters and we can use them in our application. Let me also add a link here so that we can navigate to that page from our browser. And if we now go on our browser, I can go on search and this is our source page. You can see here in the URL bar that I can type hello, it is saved here under query and here in the object, which if we can do a quick look at the code, this is basically JSON stringify of our three objects that are the same three objects coming from use search. I can do obviously the same with our Boolean value and I can select an array of strings. Anyway, if you want to support the channel, well, you can click the subscribe button. Now let's go back to the video. It is now time to talk about authentication. So this is a mock function to just test that everything works. And I create as usual our login.tsx page, which displays hello user if you're authenticated or a sign in button if you're not authenticated. We can go on our root and add obviously the link. And here you see an error because this is type safe and the login route does not exist. So let's go implement it in our route.tsx file. The definition is as usual, so I go quick. I can import login from the pages and I can add login route here in the children's of our root. Now in our browser, I can sign in, hello user, and I can sign out. 
But what is the purpose of all of this? I want that only logged in user can go in the dashboard page, otherwise they have to be redirected to the login page. And the code to make it work is obviously inside the dashboard route definition. Here you can add a function called before load, which basically checks that if you're not authenticated, I can import this function from our utilities, I can throw the redirect function that is imported from React Router, obviously, and here redirect takes a path that will be the login page. With that, if I try again to go on dashboard, you see that nothing happens because I'm in fact being redirected to the login page. So I'm on home, I click on dashboard, and I find myself inside login. If I now click the sign in button, I can now go on the dashboard freely as much as I want. And if I go and I sign out, well, dashboard is no longer accessible. Now, there's a problem if you do not have this function in a just exported function, but inside a React hook. And again, as usual, in the file based video, I explain in detail how to make it work. It's exactly the same as in the code base, so just give it a look and you find the explanation. Before adding more features, if you notice our routes.tsx file is growing big quite fast, and not only we're creating our route tree, but we're also using some logic that is not strictly related to routing. For example, here we're defining how a model is parsed, here we're calling an API and here we're checking if a user is authenticated and if our application keeps growing, a lot of logic might end up on this file. You can also see the same from the imports. We're importing valuable that is for validating models, APIs and authentication. A possible approach is for example, taking this route definition, removing it from here and implement it directly in the page. For example, here we're now inside Pokemon Detail. We no longer need to get the API from the outside because we are defining it in this file. So I can replace it here and there. And if I finish importing all the features, I notice that also the root has to be exported. So I can go back here, adding export. And here you can immediately see that I can remove get Pokemon from the API and also the import from the page. So I do it now, I go back here, I can import the root, but there's still an error because this time we see that when we build our root tree, this is no longer on this page, but it's easy. We can simply go back here, export this constant and import it from here. And now if I didn't break anything, Charizard and Dragonite are still there waiting for us. In fact, you can repeat pretty much the same logic for all the pages that are defined here, ending up with a file that is looking pretty much like this with all those routes imported here. But if you think closely, this is exactly the same of what happens in the file-based version. Here we have a file that is routery.gen that in fact has all the pages defined here and the root tree that is built here and obviously exported and imported back on app.tsx. But here the biggest difference is that since we're using our file definition to generate the roots, we have here, if you watched the first video, you remember that we installed this plugin from it. And this plugin basically regenerates our route tree every time we save a file. So that even if we add files here, we change the names, this gets regenerated automatically and we do not have to worry about it ourselves. In any case, if you want to learn more about the file-based approach or you want to dig deeper into the features we saw today, I highly recommend you having a look at the playlist I already published because we talk about these topics and more in the file-based approach. You see that also the APIs are pretty much the same, so why not having a look there? With that said, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye!